Hey guys, Pitmaster here. Sensei UFC is back. That's right, Sensei UFC. That means the UFC is being your sensei. They're teaching you valuable martial arts techniques, philosophies, tricks, drills. They're teaching you how to be a better martial artist. So, Sensei UFC. We're gonna talk about UFC 199. It was an explosive card. It was, it was one of the most exciting cards ever. I mean, it wasn't as star-studded, like you didn't have like the huge names, uh, but that fight, from the first fight to the last fight, it was action-packed. Almost every fight was an unbelievably brutal, great fight, except maybe the Dominic Cruz, Uriah Faber, not fight of the night, not fight of the year, not fight of the decade, not even fight of the fight. That's how bad it was. It wasn't even fight of the fight. So even if it was one fight in the running to win, it wouldn't have won. That's how boring it was. Actually, I'm kind of exaggerating. It wasn't that bad. Um, but anyway, okay. So here's, here's the three lessons that I took away from USC 199 that I'm gonna tell you and it'll make you a better martial artist. Number one, distance is king. Distance is king. I mean, it, it, if you're a wrestler and you're not inside against a, a striker, you're gonna lose. So you need to close the gap. You need less distance. If you're a striker, a taller striker, and you're fighting a shorter slugger, you need more distance, okay? Now, if that shorter slugger gets in on you and you can't control the distance, you'll probably lose. You need to control the distance. I'll give you a couple examples. Number one, uh, Uriah Faber could not get in on Dominic Cruz because Dominic Cruz was keeping the distance that he wanted to be more effective against Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber wasn't being effective at all because Dominic Cruz was controlling the distance. Okay, another fight. Max Holloway against Limos. Max Holloway controlled the distance for probably 90% of the fight. He kept him on the outside of his longer punches, so he was winning the fight. The few times that, that because Holloway got stubborn and he just wanted to slug, and he went into Lemos's uh, distance, he started, he wasn't doing as well. So he backed back up to his distance. Lemos could not get in on him, so Max Holloway completely dominated that distance war. And it showed you whenever they got in closer because of Max's stubbornness and, and his Hawaiian pride wanting to slug, he didn't do as well, okay? And now I'll tell you another fight that, that showed it, I mean, perfectly. Um, two Jessicas, Andrade and Penny. Or is it Pena? I don't know how you say it, but it was, it was the complete opposite of the, of the, uh, of the Dominic Cruz and, and Max Holloway because Penny wanted the distance. She was a taller fighter. She wanted to be outside more because um, Andrade was a short, stocky, just a slugger. But Andrade was able to dominate the distance, impose her will by, by, by controlling the distance, so she kept the fight close where her bombs dictated the, the, end, the end result of the fight. She kept it close. And every time Peña wanted it outside, Andrade was able to make up that distance and keep, keep, keep it in a short distance fight, which is where she wanted it, in the pocket, as they call it. So someone like Andrade wants it in the pocket, someone like Peña wanted it on the outside, Andrade won that distance war. And nine out of 10 times, the person that can control the distance will win the fight. And that's the street too. You see some of these street fighters, street fight videos, the guy gets right in their face, that's where they want to be, and then they land the punch. They win the fight. If you can control the distance in a street fight, you can also have a much better chance of winning, okay? Lesson number two, conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. It is so important. You can't stress it enough. If it's not part of your training, if you're going to some karate school or jujitsu school and conditioning is not part of your uh, 
uh, curriculum, you need to go do it yourself because you need to uh, condition. If you're a martial artist, it's as important as a left hook, a mount, or an arm bar. Conditioning is so important. And I'll give you a couple of fights. Kevin Casey against Elvis. That was the second fight on the uh, fight pass. I think that fight was won and lost by the condition because they were so closely matched and it was back and forth, back and forth. It was just about dead even. But I think, I think Kevin Casey's conditioning gave out first. Elvis had more conditioning, so he's, he was able to, he was able to up, up the ante, up the pace in the last round where Kevin Casey kind of lost his gas. Conditioning won that fight for Elvis and it lost it for uh, Kel Kevin Casey. Another one was uh, Wilson versus De, si De Silva. I mean, that fight was back and forth, back and forth. Um, I think the left hook had a lot to do with it, but I think the conditioning on, on Wilson started fading before De, Sil De Silva. And if you watch UFC 199, probably, only, probably three quarters of the fights depended greatly on the conditioning because they were so back and forth. Conditioning is so important. You need to train hard, okay? Our third lesson, elbows aren't only for cutting. Usually you see elbows just for cutting. Usually, usually in a Muay Thai match and a guy wants to end the fight if he has a guy against the ropes, he's just trying to elbow him. Sometimes you'll just see short little elbows. He's not trying to knock him out or score points. He just wants to cut his opponent so, the, you know, so he'll win the fight. Um, a lot, that's true a lot in, in MMA too. If somebody gets a guy in a bad position on the ground, a lot of times he'll just land little short elbows. They do hurt a little, but mainly you're trying to cut your opponent. You're trying to demoralize him by cutting him, and a lot of times you win the fight. The referee will stop the fight if you cut him bad enough, okay? But, re but as you've seen in this fight, and I can't even remember the first fight, if you saw 199, you'll see that one, I can't remember which one it was. There were so many knockouts and knockdowns and brutal beatdowns. But one of the guys caught him a perfect uh, front elbow and, and dropped the guy. I don't remember which fight it was, but it showed just how powerful that elbow can be. The second fight, and I'll show you this one, Dan Henderson against Hector Lombard. Dan Henderson caught him with a back elbow to the, to the temple and knocked him out cold. He knocked uh, Hector Lombard out cold. Hector was way ahead in that fight, and then I'm gonna show you on, uh, on what happened. He had one leg, he only had one leg because he threw the kick, Hector caught it, and he was in a weird position. He was like over here, but what he did was just threw this elbow right to Hector's side of, his, side of his head, threw this elbow, and knocked him out cold, okay? Now, with that said, the reason you should be cautious about throwing elbows, that one was perfectly safe. Because even if he missed it, he was in this, he was in a bad position anyway. He could have got his back taken, he could have got a lot of things. So when he popped that elbow, it landed. But even if he missed it, he would have been straight. He would have been face to face with uh, Hector. But the, the, the problem with elbows and the dangerous thing you have to watch out for, and a lot of guys are throwing them more, uh, safer now, even when they use spinning elbows, they're starting to come up more. Because a lot of times when guys started throwing these fancy, elbows and they're coming over the top like they thought it was Muay Thai, their wrestlers were starting to time them, come in and they were getting takedowns off of these elbows because when you throw an elbow, even a right elbow, if I, if I missed it, I'm right here, okay? You never throw an elbow like a hook. If I throw a left turn and I miss, I'm, I'm far enough away where I can defend the takedown. If I miss an elbow real close, He's right there, so I can't defend the takedown. So you have to be careful when you throw elbows in close, and you have to throw them shorter, you don't commit your hip too much, and you don't arc them, because this is not a Muay Thai match. It's a street fight or an MMA match. So the elbows have to come shorter. Even the spinning elbow, it's shorter and tighter, okay? Those are my three lessons, all right? Be in shape, get in great shape, please, okay? Control the distance, distance is king, and elbows aren't just for cutting anymore. You can knock people out with them. Thanks for coming.